Hello, everyone. Hello. Hooray. We'll get a few more minutes for folks to be able to come on in. Anyone else's Zoom client have all sorts of fun things at the bottom of it now? Oh, no. It's I coming. Oh, no. Well, that's an ominous start to a Tuesday. Thanks. Hooray, Karina, you're here. This is your chance for a mic check as well. Check, check. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure. No, like, we, we try to be able to do, like, you know, nice things at the top of the call for, like, you know, everybody come on in, get a chance for people to check your mic, all that sort of thing. All right. Do I want to get started? We got 19 people on the call. This is awesome. You know, that's as good as we're going to get. So, uh, all right. Welcome, everyone. Today is October 17th, and this is a public TOC meeting. You've made it, which means you're familiar with the logistics and your participation is an abidement by the LF antitrust notice. Next slide. We have several TOC members present today, but we will not be making any decisions. We are going to have a recommendation presentation from the Projects Moving Levels Task Force. This work was initiated through the TAG Contributor Strategy, so we thank them for facilitating this and providing key recommendations with community members to the TOC on how we can improve the moving levels process. Um, and I will turn it over to the representative from that group that is doing the presentation. Thank you. And if we can move. Thank you so much, Amy. Okay. The Projects Moving Levels Task Force has been meeting regularly, both synchronously and asynchronously, um, with a lot of great information and contributions um, across the community. Um, some of the major goals of this task force um, have been to simplify the maturity level requirements, um, as well as make sure that the administrative load on both the TOC and the TAGS is not increased, but is decreased, um, as well as prioritizing um, clarification, automation, um, and data-driven decisions um, as possible. Um, next slide, Amy. Okay, some of the out of scope items are, there are no recommendations on changing any of the maturity levels themselves, uh, as well as the sponsorship process we did not look at, and there's no intention to change anything that is in flight right now. This would be net new, uh, so as not to um, complicate any of the current processes or the projects that are in flight. Next slide. Thank you. Okay, some of the findings and recommendations. Uh, after talking to a lot of projects and people that have um, been working with the projects, it's uh, it was made clear that there's a lot of ambiguity and it's causing confusion. Not only that, um, taking up more time and creating more of a backlog um, for both for each sandbox incubation and graduation um, and creating more of over more overhead for the TOC in general, as well as the projects themselves. Um, and another key finding was that we do need to um, be more clear on uh, the processes themselves and explicit in what the projects are being asked to do as they move through the levels. Um, all right. The recommendation um, is that a checklist based approach um, is put forward um, and in a couple of slides we'll go through what that looks like. 
Um, so this would, a checklist would help the projects understand um, their own maturity and how to go forward um, and become a more mature project within the CNCF. Um, also, all the criteria for each level would be cumulative. So um, when a project applies to, to incubation, you would include all of these sandbox requirements. They would continue to need to meet those in order to apply. And same goes for graduation. So each, each step is cumulative. Next slide. OK, so again, um, we'll talk about the checklist, but that's going to be in the next slide, too. Um, suggestions are that a, a grid or checklist-based approach, and this is something that we are going to ask for feedback on, um, a, but at least a way for projects to explicitly look through a list of items that they're required to meet um, and think about as they go through each step in the process, which also means that they can look forward and plan ahead um, to where they would like to be. For example, if a sandbox project is coming in and they have goals to eventually graduate from the CNCF, which would be amazing, that they can look ahead and plan for that strategically as they're growing their community and uh, working within the ecosystem. Um, this, the intention for this checklist or grid would be that it would be shared by the TOC and the project, and it would be standardized in a location um, where each project, there's no question on where it is. So, and that uh, people, again, people know what they need to work on. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is, a view of what the grid-based approach looks like. A lot of um, great work went into this. Thank you to the task force. Um, so as you look at the grid, um, it was broken out into um, multiple sections for projects to look at. For example, application process principles, governance and maintainers, contributors and community, engineering principles, uh, security, um, as well as ecosystem. And as they look through each of these areas, uh, the task force has gone through and made suggestions on whether the line item is suggested or required, and then who the primary owner would be for that. Um, this is too long to go through right now. Um, however, this grid can be made into a checklist and that's something that we wanted to also bring up for discussion. Um, and the grid is probably uh, 70 to 80% complete, which means it could be potentially sent out for project review and feedback from the community. Um, next slide. Okay, so the major changes that we were looking at um, there have been a lot of implicit requirements, um, which has added confusion to the projects um, as they have been working through the process. So a lot of them would now be made explicit. Um, this is just allows projects to organize themselves in a way um, where it's a little bit more standardized and it's not project by project basis initially, but um, it'll help simplify the steps moving through the process. Okay, and again, uh, it's progressive. So by having the recommendations on um, moving through each level, by being progressive, it shows you that a project um, and incubation as it's moving through the maturity, let me take a step back. We've seen some projects where they were more mature um, in sandbox than other projects in incubation. And this allows for um, projects to see where they really are in the maturity level. So as they move through, they can see how they are progressing. Um, and then 
really the recommendation is that they also have a self-evaluation checklist so they can they don't have to keep asking the TOC questions or the tax questions. They can go review it themselves and then come back for feedback. Next slide. I'm actually going to pause here for a minute. Yeah. Because Josh has some good <laughs> questions around. No, well, one, Josh, Josh has a good point around here. Like we we had both. So um, I'll, I'll let him kind of speak towards how, how we got here, really. Oh, yeah. No, we had a big committee on this. And so um we started out with a long checklist formatted document um uh that has a lot of input on it um i don't know if we i don't have that up on a tab so i'll I can, I can read over later. the tab that's fine Just um for curiosity. and one of the problems is we talked about this progressive levels thing but it was really hard to visualize it through the checklist um so doug and i created a grid version of the document um but George and I aren't finished cross-checking between the two of those because there was committee input on each document. And we want to make sure that we captured all of the input. Um, and that's why we say it's like 70 to 80% done because because we need to make sure that that everything went into both. Because one of the things that came clear through talking with various members of the committee is that we need both, is that some people are going to, and, and by some people, I mean, including project maintainers, are going to be able to follow the grid better and some people are going to be able to follow the checklist better and so we need to have both and they need to both have the same stuff on them. Yeah, and I know George did a ton of work on that. Um, so I'll ask him come. Yeah, come on in. Yeah, I just want to say this. You've got a weird mic. Like... I'm sorry. You have a weird mic. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it is. It's like oh, okay. How about now? Do I sound much better? Yeah, come on back in. Yeah, sorry. I, I'm having hardware issues. Um, I kind of went into it uh, having gone through this process before is, uh, you know, a lot of times you don't know where you are and where you need to go. And so you end up just asking your talk sponsor, right? And sometimes that's like a two week window to try to sneak in a 15 minute call where really we just needed a checklist of a, of a thing. Uh, so I kind of went in there thinking of like, what, you know, what's the checklist of actionable items that I can do self-service for myself before moving on. Uh, and then hopefully what we would like to do is be able to generate this checklist and annual reports and everything based off of the grid, based off all of the things that, you know, over time we add and remove items that as people go through the process, we can tweak little items here and there. So I hope that kind of adds a little color on it. Kind does. Of approached it. Yeah. And then for the TOC members on the call, one of the important things that the group focused on was ensuring that the TOCs did still have some level of evaluation based off of their expertise and experience with projects moving levels. So the intent was to get the TOC out of the critical path for the things that the project really should be self-sufficient with and capable of accomplishing on their own terms at the time that they feel most appropriate. That way, when they come Come to the TOC, they are more prepared, they have a more complete understanding of where they are at from a maturity level, and that simplifies a lot of the TOC's work and doing and conducting that verification and evaluation. Any questions? Pausing, kind of like picking people up? All right, I'm seeing nobody come off mute just yet, so Karina, back to you. We'll Thank you. Uh, I get any things unless you, have, you you were done with that slide, yes? Yes. Okay. Cool. I, I wanted to double down on the um, automation and data driven um, decisions. Um, where, as you look through the grid, um, what what can be automated? Um, there's also, um, I think it's on the. So here's a question too. There's one more slide with more questions, but um, with a lot of the um, the industry changing and people moving between organizations, um, the question of whether uh, the two org requirement needs to be changed. Um, and the recommendation is that it could be replaced by a set of criteria that shows sustainability project sustainability, and there was a very long discussion on what that means. So um, it does need more discussion. Um, 
I know Emily, you were driving a lot of that. <laughs> um, and then I also want to highlight that we definitely didn't reach consensus on that one. So this is something that I think we need more people be able to. That will be for largely a huge TOC conversation that needs to be informed by project maintainers and community members because it, we were not able to reach a conclusion. But it's a great conversation and discussion for sure. Um, so also the governance requirements at each level um, need to be explicit. Um, so that's something else that needs to be looked at, um, especially incubating um, and then graduation. Uh, the Also, we looked at the what it means for each. And again, you'll see this in the grid. So later when you have time, look through the grid. So explicit categorization for ecosystem security, you know, contributor, et cetera. Um, next slide. Um, and then, yes, thank you, Bob. Uh, the maintainer life cycle, and there's a requirement that was something that really came out that it was more of an implicit requirement and um, it would be great to make that more explicit. Um, again, uh, so open questions, really what is the time frame to uh, implement I guess I should say out for comment and uh, get project feedback as well as then move to adopt. Um, so that's our question is what the TOC is thinking. Uh, and then also looking at the checklist or the grid approach um, and whether both or standardize on one. Um, so I will stop there. So I want to open it up to questions so far. I know, Kathy, you had come off of mute earlier. Yeah, I, I have a question on, on the, the checklist. Say, so there will be a self-evaluation checklist. Is there a checklist available for review now? As I understand it, yeah, it, it's not quite complete yet. So. Um, the task force group is still going through and trying to verify that they didn't miss any comments or areas of inclusion that need to be reflected in both the checklist and the grid. Um, once that's done, then both will become available. Josh and Karina, did I get that right? Sounds like yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The um, If you look at the two documents, the state that they're in, the grid is more complete with all of the criteria and has been deduplicated. Um, I, the checklist has a bunch of duplicates on it between the sections, but it has more individual feedback across the committee. Um, the, um, so that's sort of the state it's in. So it's not quite ready for review yet. Um, one of the things I wanted to do when we've actually got this fully reconciled is try regenerating the checklist with different top level organization that is actually organizing it on the top level by maturity level. Um, Cause right now the checklist is primarily by section and then by maturity level. Um, I, and, um, and I think that's a little harder to scan than if it was by maturity level and then by section. No, that makes sense. Other what other questions? George, you have a hand. Yeah, Bob, I saw you mentioned in chat about the maintainer life cycle there as a requirement. Do, do you have any feedback there on that on that one? Because we explicitly tried to include as much things that people were concerned about or doing, but weren't explicitly listed. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Sorry. Bob may be stuck on mute. All right, Aaron, you have a hand. Bob will come back to you if you can come off mute. 
Did you say my name, Amy? You're super yes. quiet, by the way. Yes, Erin, come on in. Um, I just wanted to kind of get a feel. Could you go back to the grid? Um, where the due diligence, is it clear from the community where we say the TOC and the project um, are both the primary owners who needs to deliver what and ultimately how that's done? I'm, I know that that's been done different from TOC representative to TOC representative. Do you feel like this needs additional uh, information to be able to clarify this? Because typically when you have two primary owners, uh, that makes it hard to know who's doing what. So I just wanted to get a feel uh, for what the community feels like we need to provide there to make it clear. I think Emily can best speak to that. Yeah. And so like better. Yeah, go ahead. The, the grid does not do a good job of showcasing this, and I'm glad you highlighted it because there is still a fair amount of work for the TOC to actually define in this category. So while the top level item of a due diligence review is a shared responsibility with the TOC as the primary lead and the project as the supporting lead on that, the actual production of the due diligence document is the responsibility of the project and the resolution of the due diligence review concerns. Um, is responsibility of the project, whereas the actual review concerns come from the TOC member that is the sponsor of the project. So it, it's a little bit of how the process kind of exists today, but we have not done a good job of documenting it or clearly conveying that back and forth portion of due diligence generation where the project does a fair amount of work, the TOC steps in and reviews it, deep dives into the project's documentation, and then comes back with recommendations and areas of concern for the project to resolve. And it's hard to capture with the grid, but I, my expectation is our TOC documentation, um, when it is written and drafted as part of a public comment period for this, will more clearly reflect that exchange. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that I think that's still an area where we need to improve. And I handing this over, I'm not sure people would understand what this means today. So I appreciate the color on that, Emily. And um, we look forward to everyone in this meeting, especially contributing to that work item when it comes out and making sure that it's well understood and grounded in reality. So thank you. Uh, I have a follow-up question. So is there, a, is there a document that, you know, shows, you know, what the project maintainers will do and or what are the responsibilities of the project maintainer? What are the responsibilities of the TOC? That I think if we have that document, it will be um, much more clear to, to the project owners and TOC members. So part of that is captured with the primary owner section, but the actual detailed breakout is what's missing of like, what does that actually mean? What is the responsibility of generating that? The, the process of contacting CNCF to make sure that the document is created in the correct drive folder. So everybody has the right permission set for it. Where is that template? If we're using Google Docs or maybe we're doing PRs, like the actual detailed implementation specific steps associated with those primary owners still needs to yet be defined. No. Um, my other question is, so when all these documents are ready, um, will those documents um, be reviewed first by the TOC members, and then we open for public comments? So I think that that's a next topic area that we need to discuss is, and that was an open question from the committee, is what are the next steps and what do the next steps look like in the timelines associated with them? I want to make sure we come back to Bob, though, because we did have yes. a conversation around maintainer. Like, no, 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 we're tracking everything. It's going to be great. Bob, come on in. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. I'm on my gaming PC, and I don't have it set up with Zoom. <laughs> um, so I've been um, on the maintainer lifecycle, being able to have the onboard and offboard requirements have been very good. Like, Kubernetes introduced the emeritus policy and the criteria for removing people. Um, and that has been uh, incredibly useful just for the long-term sustainability of the project and just making sure that the, the people that are actually there and in the org are actually active and contributing to the project. Yeah, that's super. Um, 
Adam, you had a comment in chat, and I want to be able to have you come speak to it. No, um, I'm just ordinarily when there's a complex change between two sets of criteria, I would look to do some kind of diff between the two and make sure that I'm understanding what's actually changed and what's just being re-represented in another format. But I think Josh has explained it very clearly. Like there's, you're converging lots of different documents into one document. So what I'm trying to understand is what are the things that are just representations of things that already exist somewhere else? And what are the things that are actually changing? So the, so for example, the conversation about the two org requirement is a net new change. And I think that's actually interesting and probably deserves lots of conversation about it. Whereas things that are just copy and paste from existing documents in this new grid-based format um, is, is, is not as interesting, for example. So um, that's just, you know, just my observation. Not as a, somebody that's not involved day to day is going through all these processes, you know, it's hard to work out what the material changes are. So. Gosh, you have a hand and I suspect it's answering this question. Yeah. Yeah. So aside from the couple of things that we called out as things that we're suggesting as sort of level changes, um, I, everything, everything else is either like original or a slight modification on something that TOC members asked for during in incubating or graduating VD. Um, I, so one of the things, one of the things that we got as feedback from some project leads, et cetera, is that, that the highly sort of interactive nature of the process really draws things out for them um, in an uncomfortable way. And so one of the things that we tried to do was look through for completed due diligence documents, what are all of the things that the TOC was asking for from projects that might not have been spelled out for the projects in advance. Um, and so a lot of the reason why this is such a long list is that we were attempting to capture all those things so the projects know that they need them um, in advance. Um, the um, so from that perspective, very little in this is new, um, except for the fact that everything is listed explicitly. All right, that's super helpful. Thanks for the explanation. Yeah. Appreciate it. So I want to add on before turning it over to Ricardo is that it's certainly something that the TOC with support from the task force can pull together because I do think having either an explanation or setting expectations on what these differences are because in the past the TOC has made decisions that are not clearly documented for why we made a decision a particular way so having this to reflect those changes or the additional clarity where a criteria may have been interpreted in a different fashion, depending on which TOC member or which TOC sitting actually went through and made that decision is important. And that's something that we should be providing to the maintainers. Ricardo and then George. Yeah, so I have a suggestion about timelines or to maybe uh, provide tentative timelines. Uh, we, we've seen some of the projects um, get anxious uh, about response from maybe the tax and the TOC when KubeCon is coming up uh, pretty soon. <laughs> so they wanna move, move up to the next level of like incubation or graduation or graduated. Uh, and maybe specifying sort of timelines might be helpful. And sometimes the or TOC are not able to address that before KubeCon. So maybe they, they have the, the clear understanding of that or they don't have enough resources and, and so forth. I'm not sure if I understood the suggestion. Can you come back, Ricardo? Say it again. Yeah, timelines be maybe a little bit specific tentative or provide tentative timelines. For example, um, you know, we the public comment period takes about two weeks. The response from the TOC regarding the due diligence document should take about a month. It's just tentative. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Oh, so fixed. you're asking for timelines for like projects, not timelines for when we adopt this. Right, 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 Okay. right, yeah. 
I think that's an open question. I think they're both open questions. So yeah. I think we talked about this within the task force around why we didn't purposely add in those time constraints or time boxing each of those steps. And a lot of it, I believe um, someone from the group, correct me, was around the fact that every project is different and some projects will be better and further along and it makes it easier for discoverability of some of this content. But ultimately, because of the shift in a lot of the processes that we've described here in the criteria, we don't have an initial estimate to provide until we start this. Um, because having a project go through and do a self-assessment now is going to probably save us hours later on through the moving levels process, but we don't actually know what that looks like. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's for the project. And then I thought about the, also the, the TOC and the tag timelines because uh, the TOC is busy with many different things. Uh, so they may not be able to get back to the project or the tag may not be able to get back to the project uh, when we were, when the a review is required, for example, which the due diligence document needs to be reviewed and, uh, and, and go through all the different steps. Does that make sense? It does. Definitely think it's something that the TOC needs to discuss with the tags for what's expected, because if those timelines are passed, we need to understand what happens in that case. So right. I, I, right. I want to... Yeah. I want to make sure that I, I've got that one captured as an action for, for another discussion that we need to have. Sounds good. Thank you. Josh, you had a hand. Oh, no, sorry. I just didn't okay. lower it. Nope, totally fine. George, passing to you. Real quick, I just wanted to comment on the diff. Uh, we tried that. Um, and what we did found when we look at the existing policies and stuff, by the time we deduped and you know set things that were implicit to be explicit it almost came out like a new entirely new structure so the way i've been kind of practicing with the document is grabbing a favorite project or something that you might see announced and then just kind of green fielding my way down down the line i just wanted to add that's that's how we ended up kind of not being able to say you know these are the big changes that were happening because by the time we structured it to the end it's saying the same thing, but it's structured different. So I just wanted to kind of mention how we how we ended up that way. No, thank you. Um, there's a lot of uh, conversation around um, maintainer lifecycle again. Duffy, you had some great comments in here, and so did Bob. Yeah, my co my comment was really just about trying to understand like. At what point does it, does an emeritus policy have to apply? I think right now we're considering it as part of the graduation, but that was all I was clarifying. And then Bob, because you had like other comments in here as well. Yeah, I I am definitely in favor of being absolutely required for graduated. I do think it'd actually be at least. I think it's worth it incubating, honestly. Um, but it, it's helped significantly with, you know, a, a good example uh, is a maintainer that was with the project um, when it was first created and then goes inactive for a while. Um, and it makes sense that, you know, that person shouldn't be in an org or have like admin rights over repos or things like that anymore. Um, but when they do go to eventually re remove them, um, it has caused uh, friction and conflict that has definitely gone out from the project like Twitter and elsewhere. Um, and that has been, I've seen that across multiple projects. So having that sort of activity requirement or just some you know, criteria that defines emeritus um, is, is incredibly useful. Um, the other problem, this is, a, I'd say like a bit more of a Kubernetes problem because people love having the Kubernetes logo as a, you know, badge and they'll put it on, um, they'll, they'll use it in 
uh, basically use it for chasing clout and having, so it'll do just enough to become an org member and then do nothing. Um, and so that is where some of the activity requirements uh, help in, you know, dealing with those sort of situations um, that you don't really expect. Um, the one problem is like in Kubernetes, uh, we have a very good audit log of when people have joined the org. So it's easy to see they haven't been active for a year because um, we know the date that they joined. And a lot of other projects don't necessarily have that kind of uh, record keeping and the GitHub audit log does roll over. So that was a bit of a rant, but just trying to summarize the, the comments from chat. No, thank you. Anything else around maintainer lifecycle before we move on? Actually, Josh, you have a comment on here, and then uh, I'll pass it to you, and then Kathy next. Oh, yeah. The other thing that, they, that changing that requirement recommendation came out of is that one of the things, you know, we've started doing the governance reviews for projects that are entering graduated. And one of the things that we've repeatedly found is that by the time projects get to graduated, you know, most of the time they've been in the CNCF for um, at least a couple of years at that point, um, half their listed maintainers are effectively retired from the project. Um, and that's why we're recommending that it would be better to actually ask projects to have some kind of a written maintainer turnover process at the incubating level um, so that they actually are between incubating and graduated, that they actually are thinking about, hey, this person is not active with the project anymore. Um, let's remove them. Um, for one thing, some of the projects actually do adopt written governance at the incubating level, and and sometimes written governance with some um, uh, required voting thresholds, which can then lead them to trouble if half their maintainers are no longer active. Um, the um, uh, we've had to straighten that out a couple of with, with a couple of major projects. So um, it's just you know it's looking at not not both you know what do we want for um, project standards, but also to, to help the projects themselves. Thanks, Josh. Kathy? Yes, um, so I, I'm wondering what, how, what will be the, um, the output of this, um, um, this task force? Are they going to be like, I, I mean, is there going to be like updated um, graduation criteria document? or like the grade or the uh, checklist? Is there like a place documented? What will be the output? So I believe the task force met the primary deliverable in providing these recommendations to the TOC, particularly around either a checklist or a grid-based approach. The explicit um, definition and better clarity of the criteria and for which levels that they apply. There were some shifts there to be a little bit more clear on what the details of that were for a particular maturity level. Um, I think the next steps and, and task force, please correct me, um, is we need to define what's the next step from a completion perspective for this group to be wound down. We need to define and complete the documentation support for these changes where they exist, which is changes to the TOC repo. Um, the TOC has some decisions we need to make around sustainability and openness on that two org requirements, um, more explicit detail on governance requirements, and the TOC needs to define our own processes as well as making it clear in the handoff and exchange of the due diligence portions of it through that documentation. Um, I believe once all of that is done, then we can consider uh, a discussion around a two week comment period. Josh mentions writing the self-assessment guide is going to take a while. Tag contributor strategy started the governance portion, but it's not yet working on others. So that still also well, needs to happen. And, oh, and I would say is not responsible for some sections at all. Yeah. Uh, That's fair. Thank you, Josh. Okay. What other questions? All right. So let's talk about a few things. If 
Let's let's start with Josh's most recent comment. Tag contributor strategy is focusing on the self-assessment associated with governance portion. Um, does the task force have a breakout of the additional areas for a self-assessment so we can turn those over to the respective technical advisory groups for completion? Let's say security is obviously going to tag security. Mm -hmm. um, the um, and and one of the things that we did not get done as part of the task force is to actually formally reach out to tag security and make sure that all of the tag security requirements are represented. Um, I, I don't think they probably are not at this stage. Um, so it would be, you know, a need to, to make sure that all of those are represented from tag security and prepare self assessment guide. And then somebody would need to be assigned to do the process and ecosystem portions um, uh, because that's not obviously any particular tags responsibility. Karina. Thank you. Uh, one thing that we did discuss is whether for those sections, it'd be appropriate to send to tag leadership for overall tag leadership review comment, and then they could be assigned. Um, how, do, how do others feel about that? I think that's a good recommendation. Any of our tag leads on the call with an opinion? I agree with you, it's a good recommendation. Okay. So Amy, let's, um, let's see about grabbing the process and ecosystem sections um, to coordinate with the tag chairs on either creation of that checklist or identifying a self-forming group to, to do those, that self-assessment for those. I want portions. to be able to make sure that the, um, that the task force is complete with what they think they want and kind of in case be able to get feedback. So like, yes. And also like, are we ready for that task force? Good question. Probably not totally ready yet. Right, exactly. I'm sort of like, better, the, better yes, I think that's like, packet. as we wrap things up, I want to be able to then give it over to like the, uh, um, the tag leads for, hey, what are we missing in here? What would make most sense around process and ecosystem and yeah, security for tech security? Yeah, I mean, yeah, at that point, the scope kind of moves to a place, place where we're, we're, we're coming past the recommendations into a more focused, more focused things on a per tag or on a per focus area or domain area, which might be out of scope, actually. I think it's out of scope for the task force, but it's not out of scope for TOC. So agreed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like task force, I want to be able to make sure that you, like the work here is done, um, and then we kind of move forward with like the proposed timelines would be. Um, one, yeah, Ricardo, come on in. Yeah, I, I think the list is pretty comprehensive, and I think uh, well, it's up to the task force to decide when the list is complete, but. Um, it can also be an iterative type of uh, task. So, I, I mean, this is not going to be the last version. So, 100%. So, question, uh, Karina, go ahead. With, we saw the, the grid or checklist is, you know, 70, 80% complete, and we're hoping for more feedback on it. So, the question for the rest of the task force right now is, do we need to send out for review and then continue? Or is this where, I mean, I know this is being asked, but um, do we hand it off now? I guess I saw that for this meeting, we would get more feedback on, is this the right approach um, for the, that we're looking at? And um you know, getting feedback from either the community or the tags themselves on this approach. Okay. It sounds like once the list is at a hundred percent, maybe sending that out for public comments. That way we're not generating documentation that has to be changed again, based off of community feedback. Um, 
I don't believe anyone here has expressed any concerns with the approach that the group has taken. I think it's very sound. It's it's much more clear, um, at least to me, but I'm also very close to this, having been a participant in the group. How do others feel? Do we want to open this up for a two-week public comment period once it is complete, once the grid and the checklist has been fully reconciled with comments from the group? I actually want to good. put this on the uh, um, TOC and uh, tag chairs meeting tracking for um, Chicago because I, I think it needs a little bit more time to be able to like kind of put the pieces together and I think being able to sit down and actually like kind of focus on this more directly of like would this work what else do we need to change um, Emily do you disagree I don't think so I think my only concern would be making sure that we have enough capacity to write the corresponding documentation to go with it Got it. That isn't a couple of weeks. You're right. That that yeah. Uh, ideally, we'd be able to have like the uh, um uh like like things reconciled. Josh, George, I know you were working together on that. How do how do you feel about being able to track towards Chicago for this? Too soon. I would love to shop this around in Chicago okay. with other maintainers. I know there's maintainers that have opinions about this stuff, and it's not formalized enough where it's like set in stone, you know. And and I think with having People, I feel like KubeCon will be a good checkpoint to get sentiment around the problem. Okay. Does that make Does that make sense? Jive with what people are thinking. Would you be comfortable with like what we have here being able to shop that around, or do you think it needs more polish? I'm I've been ready to shop this thing around for a long time. I think it's just a matter of getting the nitnoid details for, uh, uh, from Josh there as far as the normalization. But I think the the major, the major bus strokes are, are finished, I think. The others, Josh, would you agree with that? Like, I don't think this last 20% is going to be any. Yeah, like I said, it, it's really just reconciling to make sure, because there was a lot of input, like people who participated in the in the task force really provided a lot of feedback, and we just want to make sure we didn't miss anything. Sounds like, though, that there are two still outstanding items that are needed for it to be fully complete. And one of those is the sustainability openness to org requirement that the TOC needs to provide input on. And then more um, explicit governance requirements, if I captured that one correctly. Well, no, the um, so there's one minor thing, which is, like I said, there was the proposal of, of having some explicit maintainer turnover requirement at the incubating level. Um, and that would be just a quick consensus or vote from the TOC, um, just because there haven't been any governance requirements at the incubating level before, um, and we want to make sure the TOC is on board with that. Um, that would be easy. Um, I would say that we probably want to put <clears throat> the replacement of the two-org requirement on its own timeline, um, because I, based on the discussion we already had in the task force, that won't necessarily resolve quickly. Um, and, and for that reason, I think we want to proceed with this, have the checklist with the two-org requirement on it, you know, and on some timeline, the TOC will replace that two-org requirement, um, uh, but it might be after we publish the checklist. It might be the checklist version 1.1. I'm okay with decoupling when we do socialize it. I want to make sure that we're very clear that it is still up for discussion and have an avenue for anyone that wants to provide input to do so. Because they're talking with a lot of folks, there is some strong opinions about it. All right, so we're going to decouple the two org requirements, but the grid and checklist will still include it with the caveat that it is up for discussion. Um, sounds to me then that we need a TOC issue on our repo to make sure that we're capturing that discussion so it is held publicly. And actually, it's not an issue. It should probably be a discussion on the TOC repo now that we have those. Karina? And in order to keep it moving forward, I wonder if one of the sections could be assigned to tag leadership to go through and instead of multiple sections at one time, and then also further discussion in Chicago, just to provide a way to move it forward. Because um, one of the goals was also to simplify and um, not create more work for everybody. 
I agree. I think that's a good mindset for anyone that's conducting the review at, and a point of discussion during KubeCon as well. All right. So what I'm hearing is this will be socialized with the tag chairs, with it being an agenda item for the talk tag meeting at KubeCon. Um, we're decoupling the sustainability and openness on the two org requirements, making sure that we have a caveat on what it is being socialized for feedback, um, that that is still open and point folks to the correct discussion thread on the TOC repo if they have input there. Did I miss anything else? Because it, it sounds like this task force will be complete once the grid is done and turned over. Did the group have additional plans for any, any further work? Okay, that works. Anything else on this topic? Any other questions, concerns? Okay. How did the group feel that this went? I know that it was a huge ask and a lot of um, weight on your shoulders to do this for us, and we really appreciate it, but I want to understand whether or not you all felt successful in, in pulling this together for the community. Yeah, definitely I'll pass to you because you had a good comment. I was saying thank goodness for asynchronicity because it's been it's a very busy time. Okay. Um, Leo had a question about time for the talk tag meeting at KubeCon. Amy, if you that's what, an hour that we have set aside for that? Uh, we have about a half an hour, so we need to be able to time box it pretty carefully. But I think like pointing over towards the discussion is going to be really like the best place to be able to do. Okay. So um, sometime, not a ton. Do we have an agenda for the talk tag meeting at KubeCon already we set? We do. Yes. Okay. So it's going on there. Yes. Awesome. Excellent. Anything else? Just a um, slight comment. Um, the checklist there there has been some conversations on the sandbox projects uh, being able to uh, be more innovative and more creative i just want to wanted to just bring up the data and to, to keep that in mind basically when when thinking about this checklist right so when talking to some of the project maintainers um, to make sure that uh, this is not very rigid. So I think uh, we always we always need to need to strike a balance between being you know rigid providing process. So just wanted to throw throw it out there, and for folks to actually keep that in mind. It's a good reminder. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, I would encourage all of the tag and talk members to take a look at the checklist with that in mind as they're reviewing it before KubeCon and come prepared to identify any areas that inhibits innovation, creativity, and experimentation for sandbox projects as requirements within reason, because I do feel that there are certain conditions that make sense to introduce those constraints, such as governance, making sure that you can have a community to help with that work. Okay, awesome, yep. excellent. Uh, so the TOC will create a discussion on our repo. Um, we'll figure out how to get that out to everybody, probably drop it in the tag chairs channel as well. Um, please socialize with your tags, liaisons. Please remind any tag leaders that were not present on this call to take a look. Thanks everyone so much. We really appreciate all your hard work and focus on this. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.